Welcome back to our continuing series on the best kept secret of commercial real estate financing for small business owners. You may recall on part one, we talked about the differences between a 7A loan and a 504. You may recall that when a small business owner approaches a bank, a small business lender actually makes more money by promoting a 7A loan at the expense of a 504 loan. Now the reason that is, and we didn't really get into it earlier, is because normally a banker wants to provide an, a conventional loan. And right now, generally 65 to 70 percent loan to value is what you can get for commercial real estate out there in the banking world. That means as a business owner, you've got to put down 25 to 35 percent. That's a lot of your precious capital at work in that property when you probably need a little more flexibility, need a little more capital on hand. So the alternative is if you don't want to put that much cash down, you can talk to your banker about doing a lower down payment loan and invariably they're going to talk to you about an SBA 7A loan. As you recall from the previous video, that's the loan that's given the SBA a little bit of a black eye historically. This is the loan program that frequently has run afoul of their appropriations. It's the loan program that can be used for business acquisitions and a whole host of other things in addition to commercial property. I've often been an advocate saying that 7A should not be allowed to finance commercial property. It only should be uh, in the interest of a 504 loan. Then they'd have plenty of money for working capital startups and all the other business acquisition and other proceeds that you can use 7As for. Now, the only legitimate objection I've ever heard from 7A lenders uh, that they can be critical about a 504 loan is the prepayment penalty. It is true that with a 7A loan that you only have a three-year prepayment penalty, but with a 504 loan, you're going to have a 10-year prepayment penalty. The reason for this is the government guaranteed debenture, that's that second mortgage piece, which is the least expensive financing out there in the marketplace, has a 10-year prepayment on it. The people that are buying, the bondholders that purchased those debentures, are getting that yield, and they want to maintain that yield for a set period of time. So, so long as your hold period for this commercial property exceeds 10 years, you should be fine. And frankly, I would question why a small business owner was buying commercial property that they didn't want to own for more than 10 years in the first place if that wasn't the case. So I don't really consider that a legitimate objection to 504 financing versus 7A, but it's something that I've heard about so often that I felt like it's important that I address it here right now for you. And frankly, you're getting such below market pricing on that second mortgage piece anyway that if you have to sell your property because circumstances change within your 10-year hold period, so be it. You have to pay the penalty. I think you're still probably better off because of it. So those are the big differences between an SBA 7A and a 504, or what we like to call a smart choice commercial loan. Mm -hmm.